Oh, hey, everybody. It's, uh, the one and the only Kevin Strange coming back at you. I haven't done a... Uh, I haven't done a live stream on the Facebooks in a long time. Lots of months. I don't like, uh, I'm not a fan of the Facebook. I'm not really a fan of uh, social media in general. It's been a love-hate uh, kind of a relationship, mostly hate, for years uh, with that stuff. Um Man, comments aren't going to show up unless I I got to go do some nonsense. On Facebook, you now my phone's ringing. It's a disaster. Give me a second. I got to go do some nonsense to get the comments to show up. Otherwise, I won't even be able to see you guys. talking to me over here so give me a minute i gotta go into my settings and i gotta allow this app to do its thing i apologize this should have been done before i went live oh where is it apps and websites um i've got to Phone's going off. I have to go in here, search for StreamYard. Like I said, you're going to have to give me a, a minute because I got to figure this out. This always takes a long time to figure out for some reason. Uh, this is public. Somebody send me a comment. Throw a comment on the video. Your comments won't show up unless the stream is public. On oh, well, what I can do for this stream, I just remembered. One of the things I can do for this particular stream. Now, it's public. I think we're good. think we're good. All right. So, as I was saying, I don't like the social media. I used to be a social media king back in the MySpace days. Um, social media was my bitch. And I... Uh, Made a pretty big name for myself. Uh, on the on the social medias, but as as time has gone on and social media has evolved, it's just uh, it's it's horrific. So anyway, I don't get on here a lot. Uh, I do stream on my YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Strange more than I stream here, but I honestly. Stay off most of it altogether these days. But anyway, today we are going to draw the poster for Strangeville Smoke Weed, the card game. Yes, that game hasn't come out yet, and it, and it is imminent. The release is imminent. We're about to do it. Um, and I want a big, a nice poster to give away. As a stretch goal with the game, I want there to be uh, uh, an 11 by 17 um, 
poster for it. The first thing we have to do is we have to get out an 11 by 17 piece of paper and we have to draw the poster and then we'll ink it and color it and, and add lettering and everything. I actually already started work on this and I drew what I thought was going to be the poster right here. And then the, the lettering would go down here at the bottom of the, of the table. But as you can see, there's a lot of room. I left a lot of space for that title of the game and not a lot of room for my characters. And I only was able to actually cram 20 Strangeville characters into the scene. And I want to put more. I want there to be more. It was actually, as I was going to bed last night, I was thinking to myself, I have more than 100 characters that I've designed. In my, in my 15 years building the strange, wonderful town of Strangeville, I've created more than 100 characters. And I only managed to cram 20 into this shot. So I want to I get at least another 10 because there are, there are key figures missing here. Strangeville Santa Claus needs to be um, on this page. Um, several key uh, characters got left out that I want to put in here. So, uh, and the other thing was Nixon and Hogan look bored to tears playing Strangeville Smokeweed. So I wanted to change up their uh, pose and make them more animated and excited to be uh, playing the game. And so for the second go second attempt, I made the uh, white space area for the for the title a lot smaller. I gave myself a lot more headroom up here to put, like I said, about ten more characters will fit in here. So right now, we I I laid out the table and the cards roughly. And I roughed in uh, all the characters at the table. So we're just going to go around and uh, have a little fun and draw in, knock in some of this uh, pencil work this morning. And uh, let's see, somebody gave us a, a thumbs up on our video. Say something in the comments. Say something in the comments so I can see if they uh, show up over here at StreamYard so I don't have to keep that Facebook tab open. I'd rather not have it open. So uh, uh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys before we got started, if you didn't already see it, uh, the I, I drew the cover for a, uh, a little preview comic that's going to come with the card game as well. So not only are you going to get this poster with the card game, but uh, you're also going to get this comic book. This uh, It's a preview of the um, it's a preview of the graphic novel Cockhammer Lives. This is uh, this is part one, the meat portal. That's uh, the first 32 pages of the 150-page uh, graphic novel, Cockhammer Lives. A little preview comic you're going to get with the card game as well. I drew the cover for that this week, and I thought that turned out really good. That's Demon E. Wolf from Fleeing Hell uh, coming back to the earthly realm through a butthole, through a meat portal, but obviously that's a uh, – he's flying through a butthole. So I thought that turned out really well. Um, it looks a lot better uh, here than it does through the webcam, but I thought it turned out good. This uh, my, my drawing is getting better and better and better. The longer I obsess over this, the longer I spend every single day drawing. So I'm excited about that. All 32 pages are done, by the way, finished. So that comic book is ready. The, uh, the preview comic book is ready. The card game is 99.9% .9 finished. I got a bunch of guys. We're going to do my play testers. We're going to do a big session tomorrow night. Try to uh, 
tie up all the loose ends, any little details. Like I was playing the other night, and I noticed some of, some of my expansion set cards were a little overpowered. I need to dial them back a little bit because uh, they just do some really insane stuff that they probably shouldn't be able to do so uh, cheaply and easily. So I'm going to rein that in a little bit, rein in a little bit of the uh, expansion cards and just tweak, tweak the thing a little bit more, and then we're going to be ready for release. So I need to prep this poster and have this poster ready uh, to go for the release as well. So we're going to start with Hogan here. Usually I start with his jowls. So he has a big, his big cheeks and jowls. And then this little chin beard. And a round nose. And that pretty much makes up, uh, that pretty much makes Hogan's, uh, the unique features of his face start there. I'm going to give him big, big eyes. Sometimes my, sometimes that right eye or left eye, depending which one's on the other side of his nose, sometimes I draw it way too far off because I'm trying to avoid uh, drawing it, any part of it on the nose at all. And it should kind of peek around the nose like that, more or less. Give him a... Some surprised eyebrows. Give me some eyeballs. Like I said, my my drawing stuff is Getting a lot better. Still wouldn't say I'm good by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm getting there. Drop some comments in, hang out, chit chat with me. While I draw this, you might hear the droning of a fan in the background while it's Better than hearing what my fucking big ass air conditioner sounds like. I can tell you that much. <sighs> Moved into this nice, quiet little place that I've got now. I did have a. Uh, had an office for a while that I drew in that I worked out of. And I really liked my office. My office was pretty fucking cool. I'd have chicks up there at the office, hang out. I had buddies come by. I lived, uh, not lived, it was an office. I worked underneath a, um, like a, my building was right next to a bar on one side and a bar restaurant on the other side and a bar and bars across the street. it was in the bar district of the town i live in and it was pretty cool uh, i could drop down for lunch those bars had really really nice uh lunch menus so I'd be able to grab some tasty treats for lunch like i said have chicks over to the um I always have to make sure I'm drawing the thumb on the right side of the uh, the correct side of the uh, of the hand. I'll I'll draw that shit backwards all day long, not even fucking notice it. I'll draw feet backwards too, and then I have to figure it out later, redraw it. The office was cool. I liked it a lot, but uh, it made more 
financial sense to rent this place, this whole place out that I live in. And uh, here I got, I've got a porch. I've got a base, a full basement, washer and dryer hookups. Uh, big rooms. So it made more sense financially to do it this way. And uh, this is... Uh, this has really worked out. I've done I've done a ton of work. I was kind of nervous that I might uh, slack off and get less work done. <clears throat> Let's see what we got over here. Let's jump into the comments. Say something. Hey, there he is, Sean Fowler. What's up, brother? Hey man, you fucking left me hanging on that uh, on that question I had for you, brother. That interior car detailing question I had. My fucking work car is trashed. I mean, it is pathetic in there. I'm, I was looking around like I could clean this myself. It's gonna take me all fucking afternoon, and I'm gonna be miserable. Or I could pay somebody that like does this professionally. And they would actually do a good job and do do it right because I'd half-ass the shit out of it. I'd work all afternoon, hate hate the whole thing, be cussing the whole time, sweating my dick off. And then at the end of the day, I'd still have a fucking dirty car because I'm I'd half-ass it. It's like I'm gonna talk to my buddy Sean. He's got a, a custom car uh, shop. See if he knows anybody that does car detailing. I know there's like one. There's like a place up uh, in Upper Alton that's like a car wash that I think also does detailing in there. That's the only place I know of. I don't know any, but anywhere else that does car detailing. Sean's a car guy, so he like knows car stuff. I don't know anything about cars. I sold Sean a car for $100 one time, and he fucking turned around and sold it for 1000 I was like, fuck you, man. <laughs> Cut me in on that. It was trash. I don't know how the fuck he convinced somebody to buy that thing for a thousand dollars. The car was fucked up. In, inside the uh, door panel was fucking gone. The the uh, window didn't roll down. I think the head gasket was blown, but maybe not. The car was fucking trashed. I sold to him for a hundred bucks. <laughs> Fingers and hands used to really bother me, but I've drawn so many hands now. It's like, if you're trying to get into art, I mean, honestly, the, the repetition is... Uh, the only thing that's gonna there, there he said I detailed the shit out of it and fixed some things. That's how he sold it for a thousand dollars. That's how he did it. Cause like I said, he's a car dude. He knows what the fuck's going on. What was I gonna do with that fucking thing? You know what I do with my cars, Sean? When I'm done with them, I fucking call the wrecker and they come and give me a hundred and fifty dollars for them. <laughs> And they drive off, and I and I never see them again. And they probably sell them for a thousand dollars too. <laughs> I'm not a car dude at all. I always end up trying to give Hogan these fucking linebacker shoulders, and I, I mean I have some pretty. I mean this is my. I play this guy in the in the movies. So it's been a kind of a, a transition to stop trying to draw myself and draw him as his own uh, entity. And I think I've done that pretty well, but I've got some, some pretty tough shoulders on me. 
but I always try to give him some some big ass fucking shoulders. And I need to uh, I always have to scale them, scale them back a little bit. Sean's laughing because I sell my fucking cars for one hundred fifty dollars to a junkyard. He's just see, he's just watching that money fucking flush down the toilet. Last time I did that, my dad freaked out on me. He was like, "You could have sold the fucking catalytic converter for one hundred fifty bucks." I was like, "Man, I'm not gonna fucking." sit here and nickel and dime part out my fucking car that's just sitting here it, uh the last last car i had a lincoln sean you would love that car east 98 lincoln continental and uh it blew the um the timing chain and it was going to be like a thousand or twelve hundred dollars to uh to fix the timing chain and uh I uh, elected instead to have the wrecker come and drive it away, and my dad was pissed. He saw he saw dollar signs on that Lincoln, and I uh, I sent sent her away. Feet are another thing that are really weird to draw. I always have to count the toes because I'll, I'll straight up draw four toes on a bitch. That Caprice was heavily smoked in. Yeah, I smoked a lot of cigarettes back then. Fuck, I hated it too. That was what was weird. I hated smoking cigarettes. I smoked two packs of Newport Newport menthols a day in that fucking car. Do you remember that fucking uh yeah, Owen. The car was called Owen, yeah. Sean remembers. He knows what's up. That fucking uh video store was heavily smoked in too. God, we sat in just clouds of smoke in that place. If I walked into a shop today. And there was like five guys in there smoking cigarettes. I, I don't know if I could fucking, I don't know if I could stand in there. Dudes would stand in there shopping for like an hour, just breathing my cigarette smoke. I quit smoking almost 20 years ago. I quit smoking cigarettes, man. That shit, like I said, I, I never liked it. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck I was doing it. At a certain point, I guess I got addicted. So the nicotine and the habit, but uh, see, I'm drawing this foot backwards. I'm trying to put a. John was a pleasant man, you know. I th I think I fucking saw him shopping up at Godfrey Walmart. Um, a few months ago, I was like, are you shitting me? I thought for sure that dude would be dead. For sure. As much as that dude smoked and drank Dr. Peppers. Sean, do you remember? I'm, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Do you remember the time that motherfucker freaked out on you for paying with a debit card? <laughs> Even though he had a fucking debit machine in his store. For your convenience, he tried to go off on you for paying with your debit card, and then he tried to justify it to me later. He's like, that's all right, right? I was like, no, dude, you're fucking insane. You're fucking crazy. I was like, you're going to run every motherfucker out of here, and they're going to go rent movies somewhere else because you're fucking insane. You're fucking psychotic and can't handle people doing debit transactions at your store. He's like, it cost me 25 cents every time they run it. And I think he was saying, uh, 
what was what what was he so mad that you did? You were trying to uh, spend like two two dollars or two fifty or something, and put it on your debit card. And he's like, "I'm losing money on that transaction." As though you, I mean, who who account who does math like that? Who does the accounting like that? Like you don't worry about you know your per transaction fucking fee for your. Uh, for your card company, you worry about like your annual, like if you're losing money, are you losing money, you know, annually? Or did you just not make money on that particular, you know, you're going to end up like what I'm saying is by the end of the day, so many people are going to have ran their debit transactions that at the end of the day, you're going to be positive profit, obviously on the goods and services that you provide compared to your, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, 20 cents or whatever per, per fucking debit transaction. The dude was insane. The dude was a horrible business person. And Sean, you can attest as a business person. Now you are a business person. Now just how fucking weird that dude was with business. I mean, he was so bad, so bad at like logical business decisions. His, his choices made no sense. He has, he was like, all of his, uh, you were doing a $15 transaction and he was tripping over 15 or 20 cents rather that he had to pay in transaction fees. That guy was a fucking idiot. It was like he based all of his decisions around what he was emotionally the most annoyed about. So emotionally, he didn't like that the credit card company charged him 20 cents per debit transaction. So his, his reaction was to freak out on one of our best customers, our most frequent customers, and try to tell him he couldn't spend his money uh, through with his debit card, even though we have a debit machine set up for his convenience for the customer's convenience. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't order some of the products that we sold and then complain about not being able to sell them. He had this wall of products. And he would stare at it and he would he would total up the gross amount of dollars he spent on that product wall. And he'd be like, there's three hundred dollars on that wall and it doesn't move. And I'd be like, dude, you're a retail store. You don't sit here and dwell about the gross amount of money that you put into the products in the store. The idea is new products come in. Everything you sell, you're selling at a huge markup. So every item you sell is a profit. And it pays for those. That $300 on the wall has had been paid for like five years previously. All of the shit on that wall had been paid for by other transactions from things from that wall. You know, all that stuff had, had been bought and paid for and he made a profit on top of it but he would stare at the things that didn't sell and act like it was some burden on him it's like dude and that's what what sean's talking about he wouldn't buy new stuff for that wall because there were several items that never sold it's and, and he he looked at it as though he had lo he's, he's lost money on those items because those physical items are there and, and i would i would try to explain to him like dude you yeah, huge markup. We're talking like a thousand percent markup on some items. We would get movies that cost us five dollars and we would sell them for fifty dollars or rent them for three dollars a piece. And so if they cost five dollars, you rent them twice and you've made a dollar profit. You paid for it and made a dollar profit. He would also sit and and look up the most late titles, like people that rented and never came back, like stole our movies. He would look at the most late ones and he would try to count up like we lost all this money on this item. And I'd be like, show me how many times that motherfucking movie rented, uh, rented 156 times. Motherfucker, it rented 156 times. It paid your rent for a year. That one movie paid your rent for a year. And because it got stolen by one guy after it rented 156 times, you think you lost money on it. I was like, dude, you don't, you just don't understand business. You don't understand the business you're in, man. You just don't understand it. 
Sean says, I have, uh, have $20,000 sitting on my wall, right? You have $20,000 sitting on your wall because you're, it, it's the, that's your retail wall. And people come in and they buy things off that wall. Yeah, it's about constant positive cash flow. It's not about whether there's $20,000 represented on the wall because you've probably made 10 times that from that wall in things that aren't there anymore. And all that stuff on your wall, that $20,000 worth of inventory that's on your wall is probably bought and paid for. That's just the particular stuff that hasn't sold yet and might not ever sell. It doesn't matter. It's about constantly bringing in the new products, putting them on the wall, making your profit off of them. I mean, that's that's not hard stuff, man. And I was 20 when I worked for that guy at the video store. I was fucking 20 and I understood this stuff. No business sense. I didn't have any sense in the world. I sold you a fucking car, car for a hundred bucks. I didn't necessarily know what I was doing. But I understood that he was a fucking weirdo. Yeah, a hole on the wall is, is lost revenue. It's a spot that, that doesn't have something. That means something that was there previously sold. And now you put you put those things that sell the most back on there. And yeah, you're always you're gonna have a, a product that, that is considered a loss because you bought it in hopes that it would sell. And it didn't. The customers didn't respond to it the way you expected them to. But you have to look at those things as paid for by the profit of the, of the things that do uh, sell over and over and over again. This is just like business 101, man. Business 101. How much longer did you go there? Because I, I, I left. I left in like 2005. Did you, had you, had he already chased you off? Or were you still a customer there after I left? I left with you, he says. I left with you. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people did. And uh, he didn't, I mean, he, he stayed in business for another couple of years, but he didn't last that much longer. He had some kid in there working with him for a little while because I would still drive by there just curious, like, is this motherfucker going to, you know, how, how's he going to fare without me? Because I was like the only person in there. Well, it was only the two of us. By the end, it was only me and him in there working anyway. He had ran off everybody else. All the other employees were gone. He couldn't afford them anymore. Um, and uh, I would drive by there and for, for a while, for maybe six, eight, nine months, ten months, there was some other kid that he had hired to work my hours. But eventually that kid was gone too, and it was just that fucking John dude up there in that video store by himself every day of the week, seven days a week up there by himself. I never felt bad for him. I always thought like, that's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. You deserve to be alone in that coffin of a store because you don't know how to, you don't know how to play well with others. You don't know how to conduct business like a normal person. I remember you coming in and telling me about that. Well, John had already told me about it. Like I said, he tried to justify it that same day. Like, it's okay that I uh, told Sean he can't use his debit card, right? I was like, fuck no, it's not okay. But I remember the next time you came in and I was, you, would just, you just looked at me like, like, why is that dude so fucking crazy? Because <laughs> like I said, you're one of our best customers. You're not the guy that you're not the guy that we need to piss off. You're the guy we need to do what if we didn't have a fucking debit card, we needed a debit card machine. We needed to get one to make sure we kept your business. I was like, John, fuck is what the fuck is going to stop him from going to the video store down the fucking street? Because they're not crazy and they have a debit card machine and they don't mind that they pay 20 cents. He never had any answers for that stuff. He would just nod and be like, I guess you're right. In the, in the kind of condescending tone, like, of course I was wrong, but he was just going to concede the point for now. 
a truly miserable man. Yeah, you know, and I don't under you know. I worked for that guy for six years, and it, and it seemed like an eternity because I was uh, I was young. You know, those were my formidable years. I was sort of learning learning the world. Uh, while I worked there, and it seemed like an eternity. And for years, I tried to figure out like what was wrong with that guy. He had his own business. He was supposedly in the in the the. Uh, in the industry that he loved being in. Again, as a, as a business owner, Sean, my guess is you get up every day jazzed and stoked that you get to go to work and work in the industry you love and be around cars and be around guys that are passionate about cars and be able to customize cars. And you probably have a feeling of elation and joy every time you guys nail a fucking job and just absolutely trick out a fucking vehicle and the owner comes in like, fuck yeah, this is perfect. And is all proud of it, taking pictures of it and, and rolls out of there with, with a badass looking vehicle. That is, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that's what gets you off. That's what gets you fucking going in the morning. That guy, I don't know what the fuck he was doing in that business. He claimed to love it. He claimed that was the business he wanted to be in, but I never saw that guy happy in his life. Not one, not one day was that dude fucking happy. He hated every fucking thing. He hated everything about everything. That's what was crazy about him. He would find so he was one of those kind of people that would find something that you have you if you got something, he's he'll find a, he'll find something to complain about it. Show me a thing and I'll and I'll fucking find a way to bitch and complain about it. And that is just a, uh, it's a terrible fucking way to live, man. It's a terrible fucking way to live your life. Almost as terrible as this, the bottom of this table. <laughs> so I'm trying to freehand this fucking table. And uh, it's all going to get covered up. This is going to get covered up. With fucking uh, text anyway. This is going to be where the... Uh... That's better. This is going to be where the... Uh... The logo, the Strangeville Smoke Weed, the card game, is all going to go right there. So far, we've got a couple of uh, characters done. We've got, I think this is going to be, first, this was just going to be some random slut sitting at the table, some random hoe at the card table, but I was running out of room for characters, and I realized that I could just, if I, if I give her a little lip piercing... That could be Mary Beth. Mary Beth from Cockham. Uh, I truly love creating my own living and I absolutely embrace customer service. I live for happy customers. And the thing about it is like, you have, uh, I feel blessed that I don't have to answer to anyone but to my customers and I do accept credit and debit. Of course you do. Of course you do as everyone should. And the thing about that is you might have some asshole customers. You might have, some customers who ask for ask for things that you simply can't provide or try to ask for it in a time frame that's uh, unreasonable or try to ask for it uh, at a price that's unreasonable. But at the end of the day, the service you're providing people is the service that you're passionate about. He, this John fella, was in the business of renting people movies and seemed to resent the fact that people liked renting movies. He seemed to resent the fact that movies existed. He seemed to resent the fact, like the the uh, the business model that he uh, that he was in, which was buying movies dirt cheap, uh, marking them up a thousand percent, and then renting them to people and charging them late fees when they didn't bring them back when he told them to. And he seemed to hate the entire process. Like, why are you going to get mad at a guy that brings his movies back late when he's giving you extra money for bringing them back late? You should want everybody to bring your, bring their movies back late. That's extra money. If a guy, uh, if a guy, if I, if, 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 the, if I buy a movie and it costs me five bucks and I rent it out for three, but I charge you an extra three when you're late a day, I can have that movie paid for just by you. You can pay for that movie and I can make a dollar profit just off of you keeping it an extra day. Why am I going to act resentful? 
when you bring that movie back a little bit late, a day or two or three late. And you might complain, oh, man, you know, can't you give me a break this time? Maybe you can. Maybe you don't next time. Maybe you make that Maybe you make that uh, late fee money every once in a while. It's free money. It's free fucking money every time you do it. And he, he just seemed to resent the entire business. And that's eventually what drove me out of there was uh, – what eventually drove me out of, out of working for him of all the crazy shit that he did. I still, I felt like I had, cause I was, I was a 19 year old kid uh, managing a video store on my own. And uh, I, I, I had an amount of freedom that no other uh, job around here was going to give me at, uh, at 19 years old. So I was I was learning. What's funny is I've never I've never been in management since. He burnt he he burnt that bridge. He burnt that management. Um, I don't know if I ever had passion for management, but he burnt that out of me um, pretty quickly. That it was a, it, that management is a thankless job if you're not doing it for your own business. Um, but he ended up driving me out because of the, all that stuff that we were talking about the the product wall that he. Uh, that he, that he acted like was a burden on him. And eventually we got into an argument because I tried to buy a movie and the distributor told me that this was going to be the big, this was the big summer movie. This was the movie everybody was going to rent. The, the stars that were in the movie were the biggest stars. It had a $2 million budget. It was the, um, it was going to be the, the fucking movie of the, um, of the summer, everybody was going to rent it and buy it, and it was a double uh, a double VHS. Oh man, I'm not even. It was a double VHS uh, tape, and so it caught. I think it cost us twelve dollars. That's a terrible hand. Terrible. I can't get this thumb on here right. Let's go start over. It cost us twelve dollars instead of five, and the distributor said it was going to be the the movie of the summer. The people would rent and buy the shit out of it. And remember, even if we're sell, even if I'm selling a movie that's you know buy, I buy it for twelve, we were going to sell that movie for fifty five dollars. We were going to sell that movie for fifty five dollars. So we would have made a little bit less profit than if we would have bought a five dollar movie in its place. That wasn't the movie of the summer. That didn't have all the stars that people were hot for at the time. So I, for me, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, throw that twelve dollar one in. And he fucking freaked out on me and told me to send it back. Send it back. I don't want this movie. Twelve dollars? You're insane. You're insane. I said the, the distributor dude said it's the movie of the summer. I don't care what that dude said. He gets commission. That dude gets commission. He's going to sell you whatever gets him the highest commission. I said, why don't I want to buy the movies that get him the highest commission, John? And he's just scoff. I was like, why am I not doing? He's our distributor. Why do I not want to do our distributor buddy a favor? Like he he gives me he sells me the movies that uh, that he gets a uh, high commission on. He makes good money. I'm, he considers me one of his good customers because I, I take his uh, his high commission stuff and, and I'm able to turn, you know, most of it I'm able to turn around. It's not like there was some, it's not like we were getting screwed financially on these on these movies or anything. We, we made a huge profit on them. Um, uh, he's like, you need to send, you need to send it back. Send it back now. I don't care what that dude uh, I don't care what he says is, is gonna is gonna sell. Uh, buy buy a five dollar movie in its place. I want this back. I want this back. I want it. I want it off my shelf. And I want you to send it back. I was like, you fucking send it back, asshole. He's like, oh, what did you say to me? I was like, I said fucking send it back yourself. I was like, you do the fucking you do the movie orders. If you don't trust me and the distributor to choose the movies that are gonna sell the best in your store, then you fucking do it, genius. He's like, you can't talk to me like that. I was like, you're right. I can't talk to you like that. I'm not going to talk to you any fucking way because I fucking quit. And I walked out. 
Sean says, we definitely do have a, a few bad customers here and there, but by far more happy ones. We don't feed the negativity. Shitty people don't stick around in happy environments. Exactly. Exactly. It's, you, you, build, you build the attitude in your business and you will attract that attitude. If you have a bad, shitty attitude, you will attract a bad, shitty attitude. And if you have a positive attitude and, and you don't accept that kind of nonsense uh, from people, then they don't they don't stick around. They fly off. They go they go try to find a, a negative place to to perch. He says, "I wish my overhead was twelve bucks." That's what I'm saying. It was well. He used to joke that the video business was impossible to fail in. That it was the the markup was so high and the and the buy in was so cheap that uh, that it was impossible to fail. And then he, the motherfucker failed. The guy that bragged you couldn't fail in video fucking failed spectacularly. Um, he didn't know how to fucking evolve either. VHS went to DVD and he thought that, that he had it all figured out. But the uh, the business evolved way past DVD. Like I said, I hung on till uh, till two thousand five. I mean, by two thousand five, uh, things were getting gnarly. The internet internet porn was really taken off, and. Uh, He didn't know how to. He didn't know how to compete with that. He didn't know what the fuck to do, and he just sat there in that building by himself until nobody came in. You know, you're, you're what we were talking about with uh, the idea of uh, cr creating uh, you know, creating that positivity or negativity, creating that uh, energy in your business. People walked in there and just felt his loathing, his self-loathing, his lo loathing for his customers, his loathing for the business, his loathing for everything. And they just scattered. They just like, why would I, why, why would they go there? You know, by the end, it had to just be a couple of shit bums like him that hated themselves uh, hanging out in there with him. Sure as fuck wasn't me and my people. You know, I I brought tons of people into those into those buildings, man. Tons of people, not just my friends, but you know, I I had a I had a clientele that was all my own of people that I brought in, and we all, like you said, you left with me. A lot of people left with me. A lot of people left with me. Store had a shitty vibe because of him, and considering the type of business it was, he had to work uh, hard to ruin people's vibes. Do you remember how he always made us listen to NPR? Because he said that uh, if <laughs> NPR, which was all politics all the time, <laughs> he said would have less of a divisive vibe than if somebody heard a song they didn't like. He said, if we play music and you play your kind of music, there's people that will come in here that won't like your kind of music. They'll like another kind of music. And they'll, they, won't, they won't shop here because they won't hear songs they like. And I, would, I was like, are you fucking kidding? The guy that doesn't want to run credit card transactions because of a 20-cent fee thinks if I'm listening to music somebody doesn't like, they're not going to come back. Sean says, oh, my God, yes. That was... I'm telling you, man, that dude was his own worst enemy. That dude was working against himself from day fucking one, trying, daring himself to go out of business. Daring himself.
And it was it was because of that experience, Sean. That I that I said I've got to I've I've got to do something different with my life than this guy did. I have to follow my my dreams and ambitions. You know, I have to to do things um, differently than this guy did, and that's that's why I got into making movies right after that because I was I was so terrified of ending up like that guy, of being this fucking crazy Groucho. He was like Oscar the Grouch living in a trash can, and I just refused to. Uh, to let that be my fate, and so I came into I came into making movies and stuff with a real positive attitude, you know. Like I'm gonna like I, literally, it's like I'm gonna do something I love. I'm not gonna do something I hate with my life. I'm gonna do something I fucking love. I'm gonna do something I'm proud of. I'm gonna do something that that makes me uh, wake up every day and want to do it even you know do it even more. And that's what this whole uh, got to run, buddy. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Hit me up on uh, Messenger and let me know uh, some detailed dudes that'll clean out my nasty ass car. All right, so we got Nixon. Got Nixon, Hogan, and Mary Beth laid out here i think well, let's see we're at 51 minutes i think i'm gonna do this chick here she's not anybody uh from the from the universe yet but i i drew a tattoo that says strange right there and i just want her to kind of be the centerpiece just this this hoe I, I like to give uh, I like to give my girls big big earplugs, oftentimes a, a septum ring and some weird hair. So we're gonna draw her back in. <clears throat> right now, and I think I'll call it uh, I think I'll call it quits for now. I'm not gonna draw this whole poster today. I'd be it's gonna take me hours if, I might not even get it done today. I doubt I'll get it done today, as a matter of fact. So we are going to – sometimes I start with the eyes. Usually I don't. Usually I like to build the contours of the face and the nose, and then I can build a mouth. Build a mouth. And eyes around the contours of the face. But it doesn't really matter. You can do it any way you want. Everybody does it differently. Everybody has their own uh, patterns, structure patterns that uh, they're comfortable with. Oftentimes, I just let my, let my hand work. And I don't really think about it too much. I'll let my hand do whatever it wants. Okay. She's got these big Pigtails. Off to the 
this side here, and maybe her sides of her head shaved. <clears throat> Drawing some titties. I had to kind of. Sometimes you got to draw through through shit to get it right. You just noodle around, add some lines, take some lines away so shit's looking the way you want it to look. And just fucking do this over and over and over again. Come on. Fucking good. Make this titty a little smaller. I don't know. Why would I make a titty smaller? A little smaller there. Why this come up? Maybe like a tank top. That. Fingers. Keep in mind, this all gets inked, so none of this has to be perfect. This is honestly just a uh, a guide for the inking. So if I want to do some really questionable hands right there, I still got another opportunity in the inking phase to fix that. And All right, fellas, we're going to call it pretty much right there for the day, for the live stream portion anyway. I'm still going to noodle away. at this uh, drawing for the rest of the day. But we have uh, four characters. We drew four characters. We've got Nixon uh, losing his shit, looking at cards. Uh, Hogan's upset about that fact. We've got the unnamed uh, strange tattoo girl. And we have Mary Beth from Cockhammer uh, chilling with her feet out and them big ass titties. And we will uh, keep going. I've got over here is going to be Sasparilla the Weed Witch. I'll probably draw her next. I'm just going to add in a lot of these characters from uh, my first go around. We got Tony, Hogan's brother Tony. We got uh, Terrence, Don DeWepe, Wolfram, Cockhammer, Nancy, uh, Wilhelm and Nancy, uh, Dr. Bowmeister, the Dream Reaper. Uh, Pastor Pete from uh, Nixon Hogan Smoke Christmas, uh, Colonel Killer Motherfuckers, uh, Wingate that I already say Wolfram, Wolfram, Wingate, uh, Nicholas the Dungeon Master, 
Corander, uh, uh, Mary Beth, and uh, what is her name? Uh, start with a P. Gertrude, Gertrude, and Mary Beth. Uh, so that's that's everybody that's in the uh, original version of the poster. Uh, but I'm going to get even more. I'm going to stick even more of them in this version of it because I got more room to play. So there's going to be even more uh, kooky Strangeville characters in this poster. So uh, I hope you guys liked watching a little bit of the penciling process of the uh, Strangeville Smokeweed poster. We're going to launch this uh, campaign maybe as early as next week. We're going to launch the card card game and uh, get the, get this one behind us. Uh, get this card game into all of your hands, this card game piece into your little, into your mighty hands. After I finish up the uh, the poster and get this all ready to go. So, until next time, gang, uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, get ready for that Strangeville smoke weed.